Welcome back to Defense News Weekly. I'm Diana Stancy. To win the wars of the future, the military is developing cross-service command and control networks, allowing planes in the air to coordinate with, say, ships at sea or troops on the ground. But it also needs to happen securely, in a way our enemies can't crack. To ensure that integrity, you've got to test your joint command and control processes. But how do you do it? We spoke with Marine Colonel Jason Quinter on how the process can work and modernizing the military's C4 infrastructure. You talked about uh, the different ways that you do testing it. And one thing that kind of jumps out to me about this topic is, you know, a lot of times you're testing these systems in um, ideal conditions, so to speak. Um, but how do you take that information that you learn and say, okay, we can rely on this to operate in an area where it's a contested or denied environment or, you know, harsh conditions or things like that. Uh, basically, how do you uh, test the things that you want to do in the field uh, without being able to be in field conditions all the time? That's a really good question. Uh, so the, uh, I'll give you a uh, kind of a two part answer. So we've uh, established a joint all domain command and control lab within uh, Comm Squadron 38 at Marine Control Group 38. So our headquarters is aboard Miramar. And so we have a steady state ability to test certain things inside our lab environment in the Comm Squadron. And at McTissa, they also have a JADC2 lab. And that one is, is, is funded with a lot more money headquarters Marine Corps than we have out in the FMF. But so that's one way that we do it. We do it in a lab environment. Um, and then obviously we, we do some testing in the field. One of the things we haven't really got to yet that I'm aware of internal to the Marine Corps is the thought of using digital twins. So obviously that would be a good way to, to run tests on any, any sort of uh, any different aspect of the network, but really we just get out there and, and set the equipment up in the field and if you know we we can conduct conduct constructive kills in live virtual and constructive environments, but uh, I will say this: it is very very it's very very difficult to um, in the test environment to replicate what the threat would be like, um, and so that makes it very difficult. And when we talk about things like denied, disconnected, intermittently connected, and limited bandwidth environments that's very, very difficult to, to replicate in a field environment when it's not the adversary actually actually executing uh, those threat vectors. So I would say that's that's a really hard challenge for us. It, a, short of unplugging parts of the network, like certain pieces of equipment and having our Marines try to troubleshoot how to get that equipment back online or that circuit back online, it's very difficult to do. And I would say, especially the last 20 or 25 years, we haven't really... Uh, in Iraq or Afghanistan, we didn't really fight an adversary that had a very active or even a SIGINT capability at all. Um, so we haven't really had to work through jam jamming, dazzling, uh, and those types of things. Um, and so it's a challenge, uh, a real challenge every day. We don't have a perfect way to replicate that threat environment, but we do the best that we can. Yeah, and that's a that's kind of an interesting, interesting way to look at it, that you know, as as our communications technology gets better, our connectivity gets better, it actually enables us to not be required to be connected all the time, doesn't it? That's 100% true. And and that that would have never been the case uh, in, in uh, on deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. If you look at the, the bandwidth and the latency on a program of record ground wideband satellite terminal, it was usually, you know, I would say on average, uh, it was about a four meg four megabyte per second uh, connection. And then we would aggregate those satellite terminals. So sometimes we would combine three or four of them together and, and get, you know, it, to increase the aggregate bandwidth to 12 or 16 megabytes or 20 megabytes. It's the same uh, way that the C5I department on a ship aggregates bandwidth across their multiple and satellite terminals and antennas that they have on a, on a ship. So that's absolutely right. Yeah. So in, you know, in the, Going into the future, you know, if you have, if you look at the bandwidth, for instance, like the, that 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 they're going to be using for something like the Joint Fires Network uh, it, it, that they're developing at Indopaycom, um, and, and they have a PLEO connection, you you can essentially have. I, I wouldn't say it's unlimited. That that would be an exaggeration. But if you wanted to have two hundred or three hundred megabytes of downlink on that connection, you could have that if you were willing to pay for. It. 